how much he earned but uh, right now i can't i can't share right now because you can't? I, the only because it would not look believable my first internship was at at sea only like i never did internship before oh. that no i did zero internship hmm. so obviously they pay you for your time but in delhi i unfortunately i could not find it have you ever thought of uh, maybe monetizing your skills as well such advancements and such exponential growth with ai uh what do you think yeah it's not going to uh, replace people so don't worry about that hey guys this is ali salanki and today we have with us kunal kushwaha one of the most requested podcast guest over here he is a devrel manager at sivo and also the founder of we make devs he has had a huge impact in the indian students community when it comes to open source as well as remote working so in this podcast we have specifically talked about those points this podcast is going to be completely value packed and if you learn anything new over here then please make sure to press that like button subscribe to the channel and let's start with the video so uh, the first thing is tell me your journey in maybe a couple of um, couple of minutes like what was your entire journey like if you can condense it within a few minutes uh, can you let me know about that yeah first of all thanks for having me my journey from like like university or like how far are we talking <laughs> uh depends on you man depends on you you can explore <laughs> Uh, I was like uh, I won't spend too much on uh, in the like with my childhood but uh, mm. yeah I was not really a s- really smart kid and uh, I was really mm. naughty like I was really mischievous and uh, like uh, all the teachers used to complain about like oh he talks a lot and he just he does all the mischiefs and uh, like 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 kids do since mm. kindergarten Hmm. then um well, I was I was always like you know respectful and everything but just you know how hmm. kids are they talk and they yeah. they they do all sorts of things um yeah so I was like that and uh yeah not really a really bright child in terms of like mm-hmm. grades and everything pretty average mm-hmm. uh I got like 80% something in my boards so you can see mm-hmm. average only and uh Yeah, I, I hated chemistry. I my think chemistry it's I it's like more than average though. Eighty <laughs> percent is more than uh, average, man. <laughs> oh no, no, no! In boards, like everyone does, deser- everyone is like we we ninety percent and stuff. And if you look at mm-hmm. uh, the commerce people, back back mm-hmm. when they're, I don't know how they get in, uh, admissions now, but my friends mm-hmm. were like, you need some ninety per nine percent something for this DU college or whatever. Uh, so compared to that, like you know, my eighty percent, and even in my class also, everyone got nineties mm-hmm. and everything. So yeah. and in chemistry I got like it's sixty six percent so that's not good. Yeah. Um, I hated chemistry. So yeah, I mean not really really bright. Organic student chemistry. Yeah, I I I hate m- m- memorizing. I cannot memorize anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I can't memorize anything. It's it just doesn't happen to me. And mm. uh, and then like uh, then I took a drop year for because I did not score well in JE. Prepared mm. for my drop year. and uh, then i again failed je so i got into uh, maharaj agrasen ip university mm. and then uh, till that point of time till my first day of college my entire studies and everything i was very careless and mm. yeah even for my itj i think i didn't prepare well enough i wasted time and yeah just didn't score good then it hit me like all the years have went by and i have not i am not very good mm. at studying yeah. so since first year i i got really like strict uh, mm. with my uh, my routine and things i want to learn things i want to do and that's how it started and then uh, yeah just mm. that since freshman year then i just started learning and contributing and nothing nothing mm. much just what everyone else is doing and mm. things uh, sort of happened uh, because mm. that's the thing about tech there are many uh, opportunities mm. in tech if you if you if you know what you're doing yeah. so if you have good skills you will find a job which why yeah. tech is a really privileged place to be yeah. and uh, unlike iit je you know in iit je it have to be very like high, low digit rankings and mm-hmm. good at physics chemistry maths or whatever yeah. but with tech that's not the case with tech you can pick a niche do mm. very good in that and then get a job it's mm. very straight forward not easy but straight forward yeah so a logical person or a person who loves you know steps ki ha ye karna hai ye karna hai ye karna hai let's learn html css javascript fir ye sab karna hai another thing uh, that i wanted to ask was uh, can you give us like 
a breakdown of what are the things that you actually learned so, uh, you said that you explored quite a lot and you did a lot of contributions uh, in your first year itself so how was the entire process like yeah i uh, i started with uh, data structures algorithms uh, hmm. i i i first i think i did python from uh, just random youtube videos hmm. and then i did uh, java data structures algorithms and then um, and that was all right like i joined some courses but i didn't feel like i got enough value hmm. um so i did like a lot of self study and debugging and did some more online uh, like uh, hmm. documentation and stuff that's how i got really good at dsa because i i practiced a lot and i and i made notes uh, hmm. around uh, the places where i got stuck why i got stuck how that happened hmm. um, so i did a lot of self study then i did uh, in second semester then i just learned a bit of development mm. uh, around java like spring and maven build tools and stuff mm -hmm. then i found a uh, uh, so kubernetes java client which is an open source project i wanted to contribute to didn't know anything about kubernetes mm -hmm. i only knew java and a bit of a uh, little bit development like web development and stuff so and that was your first side. first open first, source oh yeah, my first open source project was the really complex project but it's yeah. it's good because i started very basic uh, with base very basic uh, contributions like my first contribution was just delete a file that was mm. the issue just delete this file that was it then fixing typos and adding examples and then mm. adding test cases and then adding some bigger features like mm. implementing new features and stuff you can all see it on my github like all the history yeah, yeah. is there like how it grew um that will make mo more sense than me explaining but yeah um that's how i grew and then at the same project i got into google summer of code mm. i did google summer of code with red hat and then i became a mentor for mm. google summer of code same project and then google code in which was a student program then i did bunch of programs uh, did so many i was everywhere yeah. microsoft learn student ambassador and github campus expert yeah and then i became gold microsoft or whatever i i was every, i did everything mlh fellowship Uh -huh. the fellowship i was a pod leader for the fellowship for the facebook track when i was a pod when i was a there's one fellow, there's one by uh, linux also right uh, linux as well yeah there was yeah. one by cncf i got into that for mlh i contributed to so we were given options like where you want to contribute to i hmm. had really not contributed to web development projects like i had hmm. no experience contributing to web dev projects hmm. in open source so for mlh fellowship i was like okay I have no experience with web dev projects. Let's contribute to web dev projects. So mm. so that's the sort of like mindset that I have like I always look for challenges. So mm. I contributed to Facebook's uh, Jest project uh, oh. which was a really nice thing. We met a lot of nice people from Facebook who were maintainers and uh, my pod leader was really nice. I'm still connected with him. And mm. um yeah, then I became a pod leader for MLH fellowship. I I reviewed like more like around close to 4000 interviews and applications. Oh. I helped curate the Facebook production engineering track. That yeah. was fun. Met a lot of amazing smart people. Then I did that for a year and then I it was getting too much for me so I quit. Mm -hmm. And then I and joined this is when you were in college. Second year. Second, Second year. year. Okay. And yeah. And then uh, by third year I joined uh, Sivo as an intern. Hmm. Uh, and uh Actually, today is the second year anniversary of Sivo for me. Today I completed yeah. two years at Sivo. Where are you right now? Um, I mean, you're not right in now. India, right? London. I live in I live in London um, mm -hmm. mainly now, but I travel often. Um, so traveling is a lot. I I it's mm -hmm. like uh, I I used to think it would be nice, but now it's uh, it's like it's too. Every month I'm going. This month I'm going to Canada and uh, Poland. So I'm out twenty yeah. days. And, yeah. Uh, you have to be very careful when traveling so much because otherwise you burn out yeah hmm. so uh, is this traveling that's a, that's for <laughs> is this is the traveling for uh, the company yeah. you're working for or uh, for yourself uh it depends i mean um, hmm. mo most of the time is for the company hmm. and uh, most of the time is for when i'm speaking at a conference so i travel hmm. so for this one i'm, uh, I'm so when i'm when we are going to kubecon that's a company thing because yeah. we sponsor kubecon and often times like if i get selected as a speaker hmm. and uh, i'm going to i'm keynoting at cdcon so that's a speaking engagement hmm. and i'm organizing cube hurdle in hmm. canada so i'm going as an organizer as well 
Hmm. Um, so it depends, but yeah, hmm. mostly it's around like speaking at conferences and uh, and hmm. and staffing the booth and uh, organizing. So uh, with these conferences, I'm pretty sure that the network you might have uh, gotten or grown would have been quite huge. Uh, does it help uh, in any way? Yeah, it helps in a, a lot of ways. Like when I first attended, hmm. uh, my first my first tech conference was actually KubeCon North America. Mm-hmm. uh in 2019 when i was in second okay. year because uh, because i contributed to the kubernetes java client so i mm-hmm. applied to the student scholarship and i and i got it so you got I it yeah went there and um they they paid for the travel and the flights and everything mm-hmm. hotel it was great experience and yeah I highly encouraged students to get involved in mm-hmm. conferences and stuff you can network with people and learn a lot of things and that will help you in your career now a major misconception that people have when it comes to open source contribution specifically is that um, pe- pehla misconception rehta hai ki you need to know like a lot of coding ya idda matlab expert rehna padta hai uh, you have to be an expert in order to contribute to any of the things um, is that true or what was your experience like when well, depends on the project mostly the pr- most pro- most communities that are active are really welcoming to beginners If you take mm. a look at CNCF projects, they have so many projects. Mm. They're all like welcoming to newcomers. It is mm. true that you have to know a bunch of things, but it's it's not true mm. that you have to be an expert, because mm. you you take a complex project. Again, depends on the project, mm. but you take a complex project. It's using let's mm. say Golang, so it's going to yeah. use Golang, but it's also you're going to use yeah. other things. You know, like mm. fundamentals of networking, Linux, or whatever it's the the things are. Based on. Um, mm. So yeah, I mean, don't worry about that. Just It's good that you're getting to learn new things while contributing. So always, mm. when you're looking at a project you want to contribute to, have an open mind. Like, okay, I would be expected to learn some things, and mm. that will only help you. Okay, and um, another thing is that what are some of the benefits that you get from open source contributions, and uh, is it even worth it? So benefits yeah. of open source. <clears throat> yeah, plenty of benefits. Um, as a student you need your strong resume you need to make network with people mm-hmm. you need to build your skills you need to get referrals and internships and stuff so mm-hmm. i think that helps quite a lot and when you are applying to an internship or whatever in your like for third year right, when most people do it then you what do you put in your resume because mm-hmm. you're not going to get an intern yeah. in like on the first day of college um so i think yeah for that in order to make an impact on your resume open source helped me quite a lot I did not do any internships. Mm. Actually, this is a fun fact. My first internship was at at Sivo only. Like I never did internship before oh. that. No, I did zero internships. I only did open source. I did not do any. So it's like a loop loop for you then. Yeah. Uh, like you started with Sivo and then yeah, this is my first coming back. To- yeah. Oh no no no. Actually, I did one more. Uh, but but mm. that was also around open source. Uh, but I think my first mm. main like yeah, it was Sivo only. and before that all the things i did were open source programs google source code lfx and the mlh fellowship and then the community mm-hmm. work and then uh, teaching at boot camps and stuff so i think open source helped quite a lot and if you don't do an internship and you don't have mm-hmm. let's say nice personal projects in your resume but you have great open source mm-hmm. contributions then i think you're good to go yeah. so yeah very helpful in that mm-hmm. and you get uh, a global network of people which is nice mm-hmm. um very welcoming community and uh, the stress gets reduced quite a lot uh, once you get mm. into open source you know that now your nice profile nice people connections so you will get yeah. you will end up somewhere um mm. so I, i think yeah skills wise resume wise networking wise uh, basically all aspects mm. of your career open source covers that's so some of the benefits we have a lot of fun as well you um, travel travel to conferences yeah. you meet a lot of people i made so many friends so there's a lot of fun as well Yeah, and you can earn via open source mm. as well, like via funds and grants and mm. and sponsorships and stuff. Yeah. Hmm. So um, another thing that I wanted to ask was, um, so of course, when you look at uh, any college student, uh, mostly when they get into their first year, they have that uh, vision in their head that you know, four years of engineering college, I'll study whatever I have to study, maybe DSA algorithms, whatever. and then at the end of the uh, four years i'll probably go for placements or i'll probably go for higher studies these are mostly the two 
uh, aspects of everyone who's there in colleges uh, but what you pursued was something different altogether you started with open source contributions which uh, i don't think a lot of people are exploring at this point um and it's an untapped market um especially for people you know just going in uh, doing open source contributions as like people can learn so much through there uh, to be honest i did my first open source contribution in uh, one of the crypto related uh, brands it's uh, matic polygon so uh, over there it was like a small change in their documentation at that point i didn't know a lot of coding i didn't know a lot of these things and for me that just pushed my boundaries to that okay even if you don't know coding you can probably still do those small contributions learn about the project and maybe further on your journey uh, in that space so um i wanted to ask you um when you say there are these benefits there are uh, monetary benefits as well uh, what are we talking about uh, in that aspects like can you give us some figures uh, so that people can maybe uh, think more about it yeah there are many like open source programs that happen uh, that pay quite a lot of money mm. like $5000 or $10000 $3000 which is a lot for a student mm. in india so you get you get yeah. you get uh, your your profile gets shortlisted if those for then you get the monetary benefits but again that's not should be not the main uh, way concern why you're mm. contributing apart from that there's this thing called uh, github sponsors so if people like your work they can sponsor mm. your work and stuff like that mm. um but when and if you have an open source project on your own then many people can yeah. sponsor that as well so for me it has been mm. like uh, um i i uh, i started with like uh like these open source programs helped a little bit in the monetary part mm. uh, but that should obviously not be the, the motivation it's about staying mm. with the org after the the program is over as well and then uh, get up mm. sponsors uh that that is also one way why which people support uh, yeah. and stuff and uh you can you can you can if, if you're really good at what you do you can do consulting and stuff mm. for other open source projects which i i do a lot as well um mm-hmm. so obviously they pay you for your time it's lot yeah. of, lot of benefits so uh, um, w- one more when thing. you said about no one more th- uh-huh. by the way like there are full time jobs that you can get where your job is to contribute mm-hmm. to open source and that's like a full time job at a company it's so like red hat has many jobs like that mm-hmm. yeah. so that's basically to maintain a repository or something of that sorts right yeah it's active maintainer contributor upstream contributor got it um another thing th- when you mentioned about uh, github sponsorships so um i i had seen a lot of these uh, repositories which were being used by other coders or maybe even other companies and uh, these companies usually then give a certain amount of money to these maintainers whoever has created the repository or someone um so i i think uh, that is one of the ways uh, through which people can uh, maybe do open source and get into it and um uh, find your passion in it it'll be hard to get um, yeah, just saying if you're starting out you won't get get up sponsors uh yeah you will you will get get up sponsors when you do something meaningful so hmm. don't expect it to happen overnight but yeah yeah it, it'll take time uh, it, open source contributions i think uh, as a whole takes a lot of time um you can't expect like overnight results over here uh, another thing that i wanted to ask was uh, a person a college student who's listening to this uh, podcast um what should be the like most perfect road map that he can maybe um follow in his next 4 years of his college life uh it can be even uh, like for example my kind of road map or what i say to people is that in your first 2 years uh, just explore mm. like try out as many things as possible and maybe then you can know these are not the things that i can do and these are some of the things that i can explore more on so what would be your kind of road map that you'd probably give yeah i, I encourage the same thing explore as, as soon as possible and it's called mm. pie shape learning know everything about something something about everything mm. so explore a lot and uh, and uh, in the first 2 years at least try to build your resume as much as possible with more practical yeah. hands on stuff so know enough to contribute and then and then just contribute find a project make a project go to hackathon 
uh, speak at a conference, hmm. attend some conference, write your blog, start your newsletter, build this, hmm. the, the social proof that you have put some efforts hmm. into in your college life. And then in third year or whatever, you'll get some internship. I, 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 the the hmm. good point you mentioned around like people study three hmm. years and stuff and then in final year they look for placements. I recommend like yeah. doing the opposite. Placement, like the learning should be your first problem or worry or like thing on your mm. mind and then by mm. the by third year finishes try to get placed mm. that will look unrealistic uh, like how can you get placed by third year when people do internship in third mm. year that's, that's how yeah. it happens i met a guy recently yesterday he's 18 mm. years of old age works at a software development company in amsterdam yeah 18 years so yeah um when it comes to remote work and stuff how, how does this work so for for a person who is listening to this uh, of course the first question might be ki he might be exceptional or uh, that person who is 18 years old maybe he might have done some things that uh, i don't know not of. really like so, i mean uh, they just hmm. work really hard and they have passionate they are passionate about stuff um hmm. there's another guy rishit you may know rishit from twitter he's also uh-huh. high, he was a high school student when he started and now he's i think mm. in canada and he's worked with like mm. so many nice companies and stuff and uh, he's mm. doing it as a student so you can do it as well uh, it just requires a little bit passion and hard work so yeah explore contribute apply to jobs and internships or whatever by second year you'll do your internship or a f- contract mm. work or remote work or whatever yeah. and by end of your like during your third year when you're working with that company for a while you can be like okay i'm happy to sign the offer or if you don't sign the yeah. offer you will have a backup as well so yeah. try to get that backup by third year but also don't rush so it's not like kunal said get mm. an offer by third year now i'm in like fourth year what do i do no it's fine don't okay. rush but prefer mm. to be settled and like uh, mm. or in, in, and it's okay if you don't know what you want to do then you can take your time mm. even after the four years degree you can do masters or try something else but if you know what you mm. want you want to get in tech and stuff then i think it's mm. easy not easy but like straight forward to get an offer just don't mm. leave any everything to last minute yeah like don't be like okay Got fourth it. year i I'll, i'll fourth year i'll work and i'll get placement no in my fourth year yeah. i just i i just worked and i just traveled everywhere and traveled the world and mm. just relaxed and everything so fourth year should mm. be the least stressful year for you first mm. year should be the most stressful second year less stressful uh-huh. third year little bit less fourth year least stressful people often do opposite they they enjoy first year yeah. and then they get stressful as they graduate that's what i don't yeah. recommend yeah so uh, i think that probably happens because um, people are just tired of you know studying for je uh, they're just tired of studying for uh, these entrance exams and in first year they are like oh now i can finally enjoy my life and that's where uh, most of the people maybe go wrong with it yeah i didn't really find anything to enjoy i was stressed as well after je yeah. so what i did was i just i just took a ba- break of one week just relaxed watched mm. tv went out that's it but uh, and i'm not saying like don't be social i'm not saying that mm. be social go to parties do whatever you like to do but make a mm. timetable and routine at least mm. i personally couldn't find anything it's also depends on very like individual people what they like to do mm. i don't like parties and i don't like uh, i don't I, i don't like partying with strangers i like parties i don't mm. like partying with strangers so in university mm. they do like a freshers meet or something yeah i knew that it was not going to be very good in terms of quality because of the people mm. who were organizing it and the venue i researched and my friends went and they were like yeah there was no food there was nothing i was like i knew it so I I I don't don't waste your time over peer pressure um, don't get into peer pressure yeah. just do things you like to do and I did not find anything to do in Delhi I've been in Delhi all my life mm. I'm so bored of Delhi so I moved to UK <laughs> um which, which city do you like the most I love London London is it's good yeah London so many, so many. I've been to London around a year back so many things and, to do uh, so nice I love Delhi as well Delhi is home yeah. just the uh, I don't want to sound like oh he's uh, living in UK and then he's you know saying nice. Now I love India as well. Love it, love it. And uh um kind of I travel often and uh and stuff. But I'm 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 young so I'm exploring 
and I wanted to work more closely mm. with the CEO team. So I'm here. But uh, in terms of doing things and like mm. activities and stuff, yeah, I couldn't find much things to do in Delhi, like just bars and pubs and mm. stuff. No concerts, no adventure mm. sports, nothing. Yeah. The that kind of uh, thing is now coming over to India I think. Yeah. Uh maybe in the next that's why couple I, of years it might That's why when I wanted to travel in India I would just go to some other state. Like uh, went yeah. to Sikkim, I went to like uh, like the south and uh, those are Gujarat, uh, West mm-hmm. Bengal. So I think those are nice but in Delhi I unfortunately I could not find anything. Uh probably uh, if you come to Mumbai I'll, I'll Mumbai show is, you some really cool Yeah, Mumbai at least you have beaches. So Yeah. If I have a beach I'm happy, you know. Yeah. Amazing. So, uh another thing that I wanted to speak about is uh, you're really vocal on your YouTube channel. Like I've seen your videos and um the I I think it's because you're passionate about what you say. Um and that shows off in your videos as well. So, um just one thing that I wanted to ask from you is DSA versus development. <laughs> Um, I think you get us this a lot. I think both are important. Um yeah. DSA unfortunately many companies ask you so be prepared mm-hmm. for that. Uh do your lead code mm-hmm. and stuff. But development will open up so many opportunities. Development by far will open up more opportunities for you than DSA is what I can say for sure. Mm. Like if you have a so if you have a I'll put it this way if you have a great data structures or uh pr- computer programming profile like so many stars but your dev- hmm. but your development profile is zero then you are yeah. then you should worry for your career you are in a very dangerous spot you hmm. have to worry you have to sit down and worry but if your development profile is extreme but your hmm. dsa is zero like even hmm. lead code is zero you should not worry hmm. you're going to be really? yeah, you should not worry you'll be rich you'll be everything oh. you'll be you'll be traveling the world you'll be Mm. you can be a millionaire it's 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 mm. so like no no need to worry if your development skills are at here mm. extreme extraordinary github speaking at mm. conferences around the world at the biggest tech conferences mm. development conferences and contributing mm. to amazing projects but your dsa is zero no need to worry mm. you're you're fine you'll have more opportunities than every mm. single indi- individual engineer in india so don't worry about it mm. but if you it's uh, if it's vice versa if your dsa is here but your development is yeah. zero then you have to worry about your career yeah uh so right now when you look at youtube you know uh it's filled with people who are just promoting dsa ki dsa kaise karte even when i started my youtube channel uh because there were like so much content around dsa i was like maybe this is something that i should start off with and i started solving those uh, code chefs problems and i started sharing it on youtube uh, but then i quickly realized this is not something that i like uh, i like building stuff i like to see the products that i build so um, what would you say about that current situation which is going on with youtube right now it's it's all right you know if someone is teaching data structures a lot or doing the boot camps hmm. we see people do this they get into fan companies hmm. and they teach data structures i think it's all right there's nothing yeah. wrong with it you have got to monetize the only skill you have <laughs> so uh it's it's not to worry and again dsa is not a waste of time uh dsa is mm. it's important and uh, yeah many companies ask for it so again to, even right now i'll say yeah, do data structures do lead code very important mm. um but yeah i mean it's it's all right people don't want watch what you do they watch how you do it that is why even though there will be mm. many dsa courses or whatever everyone has a different style mm. so people will resonate more with some individuals some less mm. some more so i think it's all right mm. in the end it's uh, people are making because people are watching so in the yeah. end like you should only worry about yourself don't worry about other people watch mm. what you like watch what benefits you and uh mm. yeah that's it but yeah focus more on like yourself mm. and your hard work rather than just consuming content make sure mm. you apply that somewhere Have you ever thought of uh, maybe structuring every single thing that maybe you've learned over the years down to um, teaching it to people? Just like you said, you know, monetize uh, the skills that you have. Um, of course, they just have those skills. But uh, have you ever thought of uh, maybe monetizing your skills as well? Yeah, I want to, but I don't have the time. That's it. I want to teach mm. machine. I love teaching machine. I'm. Uh, 
I mean, it's other people have told me like I'm really good at teaching machine learning, mm. and I I know yeah. that as well because I love teaching machine learning. It's so good. I love I love the I love breaking down the complex uh, derivations of like logistic regression and like logistic regression yeah. not complex something more like SVM breaking it down explaining mm. it makes me happy that to see the spark on other people's joy that okay this yeah. guy taught me SVM in such an easy way so i love teaching machine learning mm. it's so good i've taught it in person and online as mm. well got great feedback but the only barrier i have mm. even with data structures it's not complete right now it's just time don't get the time that's the mm. only problem yeah. i'm out of the country most of the months yeah. and i don't have my setup with me i'm going to like i said 20 days out this month so my only barrier is mm. time and the other things i do yeah. like devops related videos and podcasts like mm. this and stuff these don't require yeah. much time because they are like yeah. short short videos data structures and web mm. development courses and the uh, machine learning these are like 3 4 hour videos per video so it will take lot yeah. of time and that's it that's the only thing if i have time in the future i'll oh. do it but right now i i'm focusing more on the the startup i'm in and um, and less on mm. education hmm uh apart from this uh, i wanted to ask what does the next 5 years uh, look like for you of course i i think this is more of a job <laughs> interview related question or uh, something like that but i'll just i genuinely want to know yeah i'm going to be at cvo i think we're going to grow cvo hmm. a lot more uh, i'm happy to see the 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 traction we're getting now especially at kubecon it was just incredible like the pre- the, hmm. the recent kubecon last month in uh, where was it amsterdam it's really good So yeah, I mean, just work at the company, grow the company, help people. Mm-hmm. YouTube-wise, you keep doing my YouTube stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um. We make devs. So. Uh, yeah, growing. We make devs. Yeah. We do. Yeah. We're doing in-person meetups now. A lot of boot camps. So at least yeah, in the next mm-hmm. five years, yeah, good sort of completed boot camps. Hopefully, and uh, more in We make devs will be like really big and. Uh, more events more scholarships we we have done in the past mm. more giveaways we're still doing it every mu- every month um but yeah. but uh, on a larger scale in the future mm. and uh, that's it yeah. yeah so um another thing is uh, you're so involved with tech and you know you talked about machine learning uh, maybe even ai you're um, interested in so um can you tell me more about what do you think the next 5 years would be like for ai um and because i've seen i was working with a company recently uh it's called codium and it basically gets integrated on your uh, visual studio codes uh, or any ides that you're using and you can just chat with it just like chat gpt but in your visual studio code it can detect all of your codes and everything um so with such advancements and such exponential growth with ai uh what do you think would be uh, the next few years would be like yeah it's not going to uh, replace people so don't worry about that hmm. it's only going to help uh, people more like more be more efficient and uh, hmm. get rid of all the tedious tasks and everything so coding hmm. wise yeah don't worry you, people are going to be using the tools like you know github copilot or whatever chat gpt yeah in their day to day i think it ha- it's going to help creators a lot I think in the DevOps field, it's mm. going to help, uh, yeah, monitoring quite a lot, uh, mm. and how to optimize your pipelines and stuff. We're going to see. We we are seeing tools yeah. like that right now, but uh, I I wouldn't worry about it. I think it's only good news. So don't worry about it mm. replacing your jobs. Just try to use. Yeah, I use AI. I use ChatGPT every single day, and uh, <laughs> I think that's uh, like helps me quite a lot. And uh, uh, yeah, yeah I, I think yeah, just. see how you can benefit from the tools to be more efficient mm. uh, because i it's like yeah ai will not replace you a person using ai will replace you so mm. yeah see what you tools you like and how but i i think i think the difference uh, is so what happens is um with my youtube channel i'll give you an example um i had a dedicated person who used to look at my youtube videos that i'm making and then uh, post like a linkedin post for me and get it done over there maybe remove some tweets 
for promotions and uh, put it on my Twitter handle and everything. Uh, now, what I've just done is use Zapier, uh, connected ChatGPT's APIs with my YouTube videos, transcribed it, um, made a LinkedIn post with that and just posted it automatically. So his job is now like, I, I don't need him at the moment. So uh, that's going to happen. What yeah, that's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, I was specifically talking about talking about programmers, but I think with the uh, yeah, 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 with the uh, with such things like yeah, I think um, maybe even with programmers. So for example, um, I wanted to create a Chrome extension, mm -hmm. okay, and mm -hmm. this Chrome extension basically takes uh, GPT on any website that you want. For example, right now if you wanted to use Chat GPT, you'd have to go to the website type out your queries and then you'd get the thing. But uh, if I'm on Twitter and I just write a query, uh, it'll just pop up the APIs and it'll do the query for me and it'll just add the text below it. Uh, that is something that I made. Now I made it entirely using ChatGPT. I have never made a Chrome extension before and I just asked it for everything. All the errors that I was getting, I was just pasting it over there and I could make the entire extension. It is usable. Of course, if I want to take it a step further, um, I would have to get someone in. But the basic job of getting that extension made. No, but that's the thing. You you as a software developer, you utilize ChatGPT yeah. to make the extension. So you, yeah. you that's what I'm saying. You, you, you enhance your productivity a bit. And at a, yeah. it, it, a Chrome extension is a, such a simple thing like Chrome extension and Discord yeah. bots. When you go down to the yeah. deep roots, I think using such like tasks for ChatGPT mm -hmm. or some other tools, that's going to be the mm -hmm. de facto or like people, people are going to use it. But in the end, the final call mm -hmm. is going to be by a person. Um, yeah. And I think like, yeah, I mean, uh, to stay relevant, that's why, you know, developers keep learning. So you would you would never see a developer mm -hmm. who just graduated from uni and then they stopped learning. No, so yeah. many tools keep coming out, so many frameworks, libraries. Yeah. So you have to be up to date always. So as long as you're mm. staying relevant, um, mm. you're going to be fine. Yeah. Amazing. So um, I I think we are overboard the uh, session, but. Um, I had a great talk with you. The last uh, two questions that uh, I usually ask people is um, what would be two questions that you would want to ask me um, and from your perspective, anything, it can be anything, it can be not even related to programming, it can be anything. Um, so I have to think about that. Um, yeah. Maybe then you uh, you might be on the way to become a podcast host as well. <laughs> I'm a podcast host. I have my own podcast. Really? Yeah. Like 100 plus oh. interviews I've done. Uh, oh, that's amazing. It's called Open Source Cafe on my channel. Oh. Um, how much did you score in, the, in your boards? Uh, which boards? Uh, SSC or uh, High school. the HSC? High school, high school. I think I scored seventy six percent or something like that. Yeah. Nice. And because I was studying for JE. Oh, nice. That's good. And the um, yeah. last one can be: um, ooh, Have you graduated, or what are your plans for the future? Yeah. So I'm in my fourth year, and I am on the same track that you just gave the roadmap for. Uh, my first year was like crazy i was exploring a lot of different things so basically what had happened was um i got admissions in nit srinagar through my je scores and everything now nit was a good brand and i wanted to get into it um but then i realized if i go over there i might not be able to um you know connect with the people or the right set of people that i have over in mumbai uh, because Mumbai is like ever evolving city and there are so many good connections that you can build over here that you can't build in Srinagar. So I decided to stay back. I came back and over here I just joined a tier 2, tier 3 city college. Um, and that was my passion. Like I had decided from day one that throughout my four years of engineering, I won't be setting for placements. I won't be doing what people do which is go for higher studies and all these things i would rather focus my energy on getting maybe a placement or getting the amount of money that i want uh, from these three to four years itself so i i think i'm 
at a good pace now uh, fortunately and gratefully so yeah nice it's good to hear um good luck on graduation almost there yeah almost there <laughs> um by the way uh, what are your views on remote work i i know that we're um uh, mm-hmm. closing off but uh, i just wanted to ask you this from a personal standpoint as well um what are your views on remote working and how it will evolve in the future because i'm seeing a lot of companies right now you know turn towards remote working so how do you make sure that you are a good candidate um for that uh, job and um, second thing is because i also did a lot of my work uh, remotely a problem that i faced was i couldn't meet with people like um, digitally you can't talk a lot and you can't have that physical interactions and um, it kind of feels as if you're working alone so how do you deal with that as well yeah that can happen sometimes uh, that's the only downside of working remotely mm. but i think the positives are way more than the downside mm. and i don't think that's really a downside for many people because imagine you're working in bangalore you're asked to travel 2 hours one way every day to office because the bangalore traffic is very bad um yeah. for a job that pays 10% of what you can earn in remote work so average mm. pay in india average pay is very less like i think around mm. in tech i think i don't know 30 40000 Forty thousand, I remember. Think, really? Yeah, it's, uh, hmm. it's really less. But with remote work, it's like uh, yeah. the average pay in remote work because you're working for a company outside India, and they will pay hmm. according to their own country. Hmm. So as an intern, my pay arbitrage option basically. Yeah, I mean when I was so working in like, uh, hmm. it so, so sounds too good to be true, but like around uh, as an intern, like around fifty LPA base pay in the bank. uh when i was in oh. second year and i paid so much tax mm. so <laughs> so so it's a lot of money yeah because the companies will pay according to their 50000 50000 60 70000 $70, for a company mm. in the us who is paying mm. like 2 300000 to their com- to their yeah. employees in the us it's not a lot of money so for, but for mm. you who is living in india it's a lot of money so i'd recommend yeah stay if mm. you want you can stay in india and you can work remotely it's going to change your life and it's this is so good but but with too much money it's just try not let's try not to let the money change you because that can happen mm. and uh mm. yeah just be very careful because when you get a lot of money you spend it <laughs> on wasteful things <laughs> so i've yeah i've wasted a lot of money on things i don't need but uh we always be careful try to get yeah. a financial get a financial uh, like ca when you start making CA. when you start making around 50 lpa which is n- not a really mm. big number for remote work um mm. because after 50 lpa you have to get a ca in india it's a rule mm. and if you don't mm. do advanced tax thing you will have to pay an interest which i did so so get a financial help if you earn a lot of money yeah, don't yeah. be like me especially when maybe you were in uh, second year that would have been a huge deal for you uh, yeah, i was really overwhelmed ki, um, yeah. yeah full disclosure with like youtube as well it's it's been nice but in order mm. to get rich and get like a lot of money from just your tech stuff you don't need a youtube channel it helps mm. but you don't need it because if you're making like if you're earning full time you're making like 70 80 lakhs and plus stocks mm. that's a lot of money so you don't need youtube hmm. you can use that money you can invest in hmm. some companies i'm investing in companies now like startups yeah. so when you can you can focus on the essentials first like paying off your debts buying a house hmm. and uh buying a nice car and then you have a house you have a car what else do you need buy another house <laughs> a holiday home that's what i'm doing yeah um yeah so you have two houses what do you do now just there is a limit you know So then yeah. you just at a point you're just like okay I'm working I'll invest in other companies and have fun a little bit with money to think of it as like a game after a certain point of time you mm. stop caring and that that yeah. certain point of time will come really fast when you're working remotely mm. so after that you'll yeah. just play with your money oh companies investing in companies funds fine don't care mm. if I lose it I'm just having fun now so yeah it's a it's um 
you can start your own company you can learn more about financing and and stuff get mm. funding fund your own company mm. and uh, yeah yeah have uh, do you do you have plans on starting your own company well, i work at sivo and i'm investing mm. in sivo so that's sort of like helping that grow mm. um but yeah apart from that we make devs um yeah yeah but for now that's those are the only two things in the near future that i'm going to focus on mm. and uh, if you are comfortable in sharing like uh, of course you shared the second year ka kunal how much he earned but uh, right now i can't i can't share right now because you can't? <laughs> I, the only because it would not look believable and really yeah, you would not believe it the ashneer grover also I, I, said that in his interview hmm. recently he said that tum logo ko pata nahi hai influencers kitna kamate hain agar hum tumko bata dein hmm. usne ek ye bhi cheez quote ki thi ki maine startups and mba wagera se bhi itna nahi kamaya wo baat i am an in, hmm. i am an influencer so i can 100% agree on that but hmm. but apart from the youtube stuff i don't really count my youtube earnings at earnings when i am sharing hmm. it to people kyunki har koi youtube nahi kar sakta hmm. hai na yeah so youtube earning to main lagata hi nahi hu i focus more on the remote work and the the consultancy mm. things and jo tech se jo tum cheeze kar sakte ho apna skills se mm. wo wali cheeze include mm. karke main nahi bata sakta it would look unbelievable because and yeah. and also the next thing is it's you you should not be motivated by that theek hai you should uh, is it uh, is it 3 uh, crore plus no comments are we looking yeah no comments ah uh, no comments uh, we didn't get that number from him then <laughs> No worries. Yeah, but that should not be the motivation. Okay, तभी मैं yeah, yeah, yeah. I never share about such thing on YouTube either. कभी YouTube पे तुम्हें कोई proof नहीं मिलेगा of me. Some okay. people do it. How I made one crore? How I made two crores? I would never do that. I I would never share my yeah. my income. I would never disclose it. Uh, and because I mm. I don't want that sort of motivation for you to have. क्योंकि mm. if you are passionate about what you do and passionate about tech and you're really good at it, then money will come. Don't worry mm. about that. But mm. having fancy lifestyle and stuff. and i think that should not be like a measure of success that's why i stopped mm-hmm. buying like shoes and watches either i gave away all my shoes and watches mm-hmm. and i don't want all the you know things that like mm-hmm. you would never see me with a designer uh, bag like a louis vuitton or whatever no yeah yeah i wear like swag free t-shirts um so say so yeah, i mean uh, other persons like money and stuff that should not be your motivation you will get scammed really mm-hmm. badly because these things can mm-hmm. be faked very easily so mm-hmm. always always take motivation from the like what work they have done in community their tech stack mm-hmm. the projects they worked on the sort of companies they worked on with rather than oh mm-hmm. this guy has a nice car nice house yeah. i will take motivation from them so i yeah, don't don't worry yeah, about yeah i i think that that's a very good point and i i see a lot of people you know um just like you mentioned how i earn this much amount of money in this much amount of time and uh, based on that then they try to sell them something try to uh, be like ha huh, now you can probably buy my course which teaches you about these so things biggest so biggest red flag uh, yeah very big red flag yeah i don't mind i don't yeah. i'm not against paid courses at all some nice yeah, courses yeah. you can do on udemy for like 4 500 rupees I, it's I, fine i think uh, a major distinction between good courses and bad courses is that good courses will focus on the curriculum mm. not on um, like, like the outcome okay yeah, yeah, yeah. because many companies yeah, yeah, do this the they're out- like join our course and we will give you a referral to facebook how would you yeah. do that because you don't know me so how can you give me a referral so instead yeah, yeah focus on the it's the instructor instructor plays a really important mm. role so then yeah. my favorite one of my favorite instructors is tech with nana so mm-hmm. so good at teaching and her boot yeah. camps and everything it's focused on teaching not like mm. fancy stuff like uh, earn this much amount of money or whatever um, yeah yeah i mean yeah good luck <laughs> hmm. uh thank you so much man uh, it's been a pleasure and i'm sorry to take more of your time but uh, it was great meeting you and hope to do this again soon maybe explore the unexplored part of uh, kunal mm-hmm. rather than just talking about the tech so yeah yeah thanks for having me have a good one bye bye